Okay. Hello. Hi. Um, my name is David Wishart. I'm husband to John Wishart. My husband John Wishart died recently. Um, we were together 25 years. Um, we lived and worked together and we were never alone. And so I kind of did the math and I um, I'm sure I did the math incorrectly because one of the lovely things that comes with grief is um, being easily confused. But I think if you are generous and you don't factor in drive time, as so many couples work outside the home and work apart from each other, um, my John and I were together the equivalent of 30 seven maybe 37 years we were never apart um never's a little bit strong there was a few moments where we um traveled briefly apart from each other but it just really didn't like it <laughs> In fact, the last time I traveled without him, I begged him, please, never let me go away without you, because I, I just can't bear it. So, the reason I'm making this video today is, um, and by the way, this is my second try. The first time I hit the wrong button, I had it on photo. And I thought I was making a video, and I talked and talked and talked and talked and talked and talked, and it was a still image. So, um, I I haven't lost the ability to laugh at myself. But my voice sounds weird. Um, one of the things about grief and isolation is your voice changes. When I do have occasions where I'm speaking to somebody on the phone, um, they assume I have a cold or, oh, you have the flu, I hope you get better. No, it's um, not that. It's just, this is what happens when you, when you don't use your voice. So, oh, this is John's, this is John's wedding ring. This is mine. We married three times. Um, two of them were taken from us. One of them was expunged, of all things. Like removed from history. We even sent our check back for our... Um, what do you call it? Marriage license application. They, they wanted to just remove it from history. Um, we also had a domestic partnership. Um, but of marriages, we had three. The last one, um, fortunately, we were able to keep. And the last one became federally recognized. Here beside me, I'm in our bed. This is Boo Boo. Who looks, he makes me so happy and sad at the same time. He looks remarkably like my John. Um, little furrowed brow and his cute ears. So looking at him makes me happy and sad. He's named Boo Boo because John and I, we had a um, small little design in the upholstery business. And John was a talent with fabric and could spot fabric and fa flaws in fabric with just like laser vision. Um, we came across Boo Boo, and this is lucky, in a giant cardboard box filled with nothing but monkeys. The cutest monkeys, they're just adorable. And John is just standing there staring into this giant box of monkeys. And he reaches in and he picks the one monkey who had been sewn 
incorrectly. His fur, which has a nap to it and a direction, was the only one that's sewn with the fur going in the wrong direction. And John could spot that. So he named him Boo Boo instantly. And we lived a modest life. And we were on the way to the checkout. John um, had a cancer called multiple myeloma and was using a cane because of a, a medical mistake that happened during his treatment and left him with um, a lot of nerve loss, dignity loss. Loss of consortium, which is, you're going to have to Google that because that's a polite word for what was um, taken from us. Um, but he used a cane to um, hold him just in case um, a, a nerve attack would occur. And so he was unable to run back, but he was looking at Boo Boo and he said, Boo Boo needs a friend. Would you go and unpack to that giant cardboard box and get Boo Boo a friend? So I ran back, and this here is Lucky. And he's named Lucky because he was lucky to be chosen. So the reason I'm making this, I guess it's a blog, is manifold. One, I miss my husband terribly. Two, shock, I'm a widower, I'm a sexual minority widower. We live in a small sporting town in the Columbia River Gorge called Hood River, which in the summer is um, generally progressive. The winters are harsh and most people leave. And it becomes more difficult in the winter. You hear the word faggot. Um, and um, it makes you cry. Um, but we're not too far from Portland. Um, um, the road to Portland is difficult in the winter. It can be. But um, even with being relatively close to Portland, it's been shocking to me that I've been um, unsuccessful in finding a support community for um, sexual minorities in grief. Um, I've sought help. And advice has been, join an online community. Well, I did that. The largest online community I could find. And every time I'm there, I'm, I'm the only person logged in. And it makes me feel even more isolated. Um, John and I live together, work together in our home, in our small studio, creating furniture and working on upholstery furniture and design. And we were never apart all 25 years. And by doing the math, um, you know, I, and I, again, I'm, I'm sure I'm off because one of the really lovely gifts of grief is being easily confused. And I think it calculates out if you kind of are generous and ignore commute times because most people work outside the house, at least one of the, one of the couple. John and I have been together the equivalent of 37 years, maybe. So, and we're never, never tired of each other. We couldn't get enough. When we met, John worked in the cell loft and was starting his um, upholstery design business. And I had just returned from working in a little village in Baja, Mexico, teaching windsurfing for, I made $10 a day. 
Um, actually, I made eight dollars a day if I um, had dinner in the hotel with the guests. And um, oh, come on, two dollars a day to have dinner in the hotel and dine with the guests who were far more interesting than um, you know just hanging out and talking surfer dude with my co-workers all the time and eating beans out of a can sure i'm going to dine with the guests and i had a it was a great gig little village there was no telephone in town you had to ride your bicycle to another village to use what's called a phone cassetta um, many houses had no electricity and, but there was wind and um, that's what I did. I had just returned from doing that. And it was, um, I had just taken another engineering gig. I had this degree years ago in electrical and computer engineering. And one day I, I just meet this lovely man. And I'll tell that story one day. But the reason, the reason for this blog is manifold. One is, my John wants pain pills would be on board. I'd get up early and I'd get his pain pills for him with a little snack. And I'd crawl back into this bed of ours. And this is his side of the bed, by the way. And um, when the pain pills had kicked in and I had crawled back into bed, He'd get up and he'd go into his kitchen and he'd take his phone and he would stream these videos, these blogs, these short movies made by this um, person named Casey Neistat. And they were inspiring to him. He'd watch these videos while he would cheat and have himself a little bit of milky coffee. Just a little bit of milky coffee, a little bit of caffeine. He wasn't supposed to have caffeine. But I'm so glad he went to he cheated just a little bit. And he really enjoyed this personality. He inspired him. And his positivity was infectious. And um, John just enjoyed beauty and, and kind people. And I, you may hear him in the background. Um, we don't have a television, but I just stream things to keep the house not so quiet. And, I streamed things at random, and lo and behold, there was Mr. Neistat, Casey Neistat, came on, and I thought, you know, I failed. I failed at finding a grief support community for sexual minorities, for widowers like me, and widows. Um, that have lost their wives and um, for all sexual minorities that have lost their husbands, wives, partners. Um, there just doesn't exist one. I was stunned. We don't live that far from Portland, which most people might perceive as being quite progressive. And many, many years ago when everyone was dying of AIDS, there were grief support groups everywhere. But um, today, there's nothing. And it's been, well, an eye-opener. Eye My advice was, that was given to me by, let me get it straight, a clinical psychologist, and I think one was a psychiatric nurse practitioner was to join an online community. Well, I did that. I'd already looked at it first. They said it was the largest one in the world and I, it served the world. 
I did it. I complied. But every time I'm there, I'm the only person online. Now, there may be others elsewhere that I'm unaware of that I've not found them. There may be something buried in Facebook, but my husband had such strong opinions about Facebook that I just don't know if I can go against them. We, we never joined Facebook. We had issues with Mark Zuckerberg. We had issues with privacy and monetizing our information. Um, or anybody's information, and um, it was not a paranoia. It's just that I, I just, I just don't think I can go join Facebook. The other thing he he kind of always thought of it is a time suck. I remember one time we were invited to uh, an Oregon beach house, and the Oregon coast is a bit rough. And um, sunny days are, are few and far between, but the summers are pretty good. The water is cold, and John and I love the water, and we couldn't be near it without being in it. And um, we went to this um, gathering of gay men at this beach house, and we were the only two that got off the porch and went down to the beach. We found a couple of um, skim boards in the garage. We went to a sporting store and we bought a couple of boogie boards even. Um, but we waxed up the skim boards and we used these really poorly constructed boogie boards and donned, you know, some rubber because um, the water's cold. And we played. We had a blast in the water while most everybody stayed on the porch and updated their Facebook pages. So, John, we, we agreed on so many things and I, we would observe this and we just think, gosh, what a time suck. Um, get out there and come down to the beach and Try skimming, and yeah, you're probably going to fall hard on the pack sand, and no, it's not comfortable, but if you do it right and get one that's really fun, it's a blast. So this is who we were, and I am now, I know I'm weird. My voice is weird because I'm isolated. No one comes by. It's winter. That makes it harder. Our birthdays are both in January. There were the holidays. Our last wedding anniversary, our, uh, the anniversary of our third marriage, was um, the winter solstice. So, yeah, it's been rough and isolating. And I've not found a support group. So, my point and my inspiration is my husband, who I miss terribly. And his affinity for this really positive spirit named Casey Neistat. And I thought, you know what? This isn't going to be anything like that. But... I can't be the only sexual minority widower who's found themselves isolated. Now, people will say grief is grief is grief. It's not. And that grief is grief is grief, and it doesn't matter who's in the community. And I know that's a momentum that people want to believe is is here, and maybe it will be here soon, but it's not. I faced bigotry just trying to bury my husband. I had to have an advocate intervene with the cemetery just to bury my husband. 
So it's all still here. And if recent politics has taught us anything, it's still here. But let's be positive about that. Hate and fear take so much energy to maintain that it, it's just not sustainable. So have no fear. That stuff's going to go away. But in the meantime, I was really hopeful that I could find a group of people who I can identify with, not necessarily a reflection of myself, but people that reflect at least something of myself to where I don't have to translate every word or bit of our history um, as a community um, of sexual minorities and who might be able to identify more readily with the uniqueness that is the grief of people that um, just have had a different life. I don't know how better to put that. Um, it doesn't exist. And the place I found online that claims to be the largest in the world, again, Every time I'm there, I'm the only person online, which makes me feel so much more isolated. So I've given up. So I'm going to use my husband as inspiration. I'm going to try to upload this daily. Um, really, I guess just for me. But you know what? Maybe it will help others. Who knows? Maybe it will help others feel not so alone. Maybe somebody will take it and run with it and create a community. Maybe I'll be directed to a community. Maybe something amazing will come of it. Maybe I'll just find a way to navigate this loss, which I am honestly having a very tough time with. There's no promises. I'd like desperately to be with my husband, and that's his wedding ring. This is mine. God, we even faced bigotry just buying our wedding rings. I remember the first marriage. We went to a shop that we um, had been told was cool hippies and it was you know such a hip little jewelry shop when we told them that we had married our sales girl said that that was an abomination that should never have been allowed to happen right to her face so you know what we did <laughs> in our little town here, our little sporting town, after being turned away so rudely by this shop that all our straight sporting hetero friends thought was so inclusive and cool and edgy and hipster great after being turned away so rudely. And by the way, they all still shop there. John told me, he said, you know what? Let's go to Walmart. 
That's always kind of brace for, oh, oh, if it went that bad at the cool, edgy, hipster store. What are we going to face at a Walmart jewelry counter? And yeah, our little town has a Walmart. So we go to the counter and no, it's Walmart. We live a modest life. These are, we're inexpensive. And I'm braced. And a lovely woman asks us if she can help us. I explained to her that we had um, just married the day before. Well, the day before, marriage licenses had been become available magically in Multnomah County. And we were part of 3,000 couples that married in a single day. Think about that. 3,000 couples desperate to become family. And here we were asking for wedding bands at Walmart after having been turned away at the cool hipster store so rudely. Abomination. An abomination that should never have happened. This woman here at Walmart was so amazing. She said, oh, congratulations. I'm so thrilled. What a lovely thing. What can I show you? And she sold us wedding rings and was really happy about it. So, you know, say what you will about Walmart and its problems. But that one woman who worked at that counter selling inexpensive jewelry, I believe these were made in India, was so lovely and so excited for us and happy for us and genuine. And you know when it's sincere. So, in honor of my husband and seeking help to try and survive, and inspired by John's sense of aesthetic and positivity and his affinity for this amazing force called Casey Neistat. I'm going to give this a try. I'm going to try. I'm a horrible videographer. Is that even the right name? And I'm going to try and upload daily and talk and see if in helping myself maybe I can help others. So I'm David Wishart. My husband was John Wishart. The last time I asked him to marry me Last time marriage became available to us, I had kneeled behind him. I had heard that it had become available before he had. So when he turned around, he was a bit puzzled and surprised. And he, but he realized, I'm, I'm on my knee because of the, I'm going to be asking him to marry him yet again. And I asked for his hand. And his answer was, Yes, and would you take my name? And it made me so happy. I 
I have a nephew and his wife and children who live in Sweden. They call me a pioneer. They call John and I pioneers. They called my husband Uncle John, which makes me so happy. He was Uncle John. And perhaps we are pioneers. But um, I'm so happy to be David Bouchard. Um, I'm very sad because I miss John Bouchard so much. But I'm going to try this. And if you have patience or any interest, maybe you'll watch. Maybe no one will watch. Maybe John will watch. But, um, thank you for listening. I realize I'm rambling. I do not have the gift of being concise. But, um, Bless you all. Thank you for listening. And thank you, Casey Neistat, for inspiring my husband with positive light and inspiration for things of beauty and excitement and joy. Just joy. He just was drawn to it. And people were drawn to him. That's who he was. That's who he is. So thank you all for listening.